All right, guys. This is our final tier list for summer 2024. This is not going to be an individual episode tier list. I know that Oceanoko finale hasn't really happened just yet. It's going to happen this coming up Sunday. But I think we're at a good point where we can pretty much judge the overall anime as a whole season. There's a lot of animes that obviously we've dropped due to the lack of viewership and interest within our community. Maybe I can say some stuff about those, but I will not be placing them into the tier list because I feel like... If I haven't finished the season, then I don't know what I'm fucking talking about. It's just not correct. Here we go. First anime that we have finished completely. I would like to talk about... Failure Frame! This shit's so fucking mid. Oh my god. Listen. First episode, there was a lot of hype built up. Because it was an isekai format that I truly enjoy. A whole school setting getting transported where everyone else already has... Um, you know, established hierarchies, who's the popular kids, who's the bullied ones, who are the, you know, whatnot. And, and that kind of stuff, when you combine with, you know, people getting different powers can lead to fascinating um, just relationships, mostly through just evil people power tripping, right? But I love that shit. But the CGI truly was a failure frame. This anime called Failure Frame lived up to its name. Every frame was a failed frame whenever they started doing fucking CGI battles and... Just because it's CGI doesn't mean it's bad. I've seen good CGI. Good CGI to me is when I watch something and I don't even know that it's CGI. When it goes transitions from 3D to 2D, I shouldn't feel this whiplash of like, ugh, like going over a fucking speed bump at like 200 kilometers per hour. That's how it felt watching Failure Frame. However, the good sides about Failure Frame is Tuka, the main character, and how much of a quote-unquote evil piece of shit he is but he's very aware he delivers justice that a white knight beta cuck fucking you know a, a good main character can do in these isekais right those characters i hate those ones that's always about oh what about my morals and ethics perfect example is shun from kumudeska right hate fucking main character heroes like him tuka's different he's like yep i'm a piece of shit and i'm gonna deliver justice onto those evil beings because they deserve it and he was completely fine with it and he was not trying to sugarcoat it or try to justify what he was doing is right i love that he was great the <laughs> best parts of the anime probably was the slice of life moments whenever it was just set us just thirsting for duka right those slice of life moments truly outshine the actual quote-unquote hype combat moments because again, the combat moments are just fighting random CGI monsters that we don't really care about. Plus the fact that a main character can just do paralyze, sleep, poison, poison, bazook. It's like, ugh. It's, it's, it's not fun at a certain point, right? There's definitely um, issues when your main character is this fucking overpowered. And you can clearly see what happens due to that. Some other elements I liked is Goddess Vicious. I enjoyed actually whenever we went to the separate perspective of the different students, rather than just sticking with Tuka's party, we go back to the other kids, see what each faction is doing. <laughs> Fucking Kirihara talking in third person, just completely power tripping was always so funny to me. There is actually a lot of fun moments had in Failure Frame, but if we consider the overall anime season, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I can't put this shit on good. This shit's mid. You're fucking lucky that it's not Dookie. This mid. Next anime. Let's talk about Isekai Shikaku. I think that I overglazed Isekai Shikaku the more I thought about it. I oh, oh also before we do that, let, let let's give a final um score because I always have like a final score, you know, a minimum rating at the end of a season. But you know, I I think about it. And I think about it, is it appropriate? Failure frame, I think, is five point something. Yeah. I don't think this is in the realm of the six, honestly. I, I think that maybe it can go as high as like a 5.9. Who cares? But I think it's like a five point something. It's it's just mid and it is what it is. Isekai Shikaku was a pretty good... Oh, no, not that one. Where is it? Isekai Shikaku was a pretty interesting anime. In this season, summer 2024, where there were so many rom-coms, right? There was little to no isekais compared to the other like seasons of anime. And this one, first episode, I was like, what's this going to be about? Okay, a little bit of comedy. Is there any serious plot? There was a serious plot. As they start to introduce more characters and get more into the story, it turns out the Isekai characters are actually the shitty people, right? And it's this revelation that Sensei can also deport these shitty Isekais. <laughs> I love that concept. 
paired up with animation that is definitely better than Failure Frame. I think the animation was not perfect, but it was definitely not bad either. It was definitely acceptable, above average. And the soundtrack, Kenichiro Suedo, the same guy who did Eminence in Shadow, as well as ReZero, right? That's the guy. Made for incredibly hype moments. There were some episodes where it got very quote-unquote episodic as each episode pertained to like, rather than advancing the plot, it was just like little slice of life episodes, right? Like learning a lesson. But those are some of the best episodes for me. Like for example, the um, the tree spirit operating a bar right beside a gambling casino and it's a whole lesson of morality of what's good and bad. It's not just this thing of good and evil that's way more nuanced and people learned that it was never about the other worlders that created this casino because as soon as they were banished what happened to the locals they themselves became the you know harbingers of evil right there were some good lessons to be had but i think it, it started to kind of lose attention of the audience at a certain point and it came back full circle to kind of further elevate the plot at the end where we see sachan and now the whole fairy queen and it's looking like season two might happen i think that it was overall good I think it was a good anime, and I think that I gave it a minimum 7.5. I think that score is a bit too high. I think that this is probably a high 6 or like a low 7. I, I, I think that maybe it should be a 7 point something. I don't think it's a 6 point something. It was genuinely entertaining, but it wasn't the peak of storytelling either. I am confidently just putting this like a 7 point something. Minimum seven, I think, is where I'm going to place this. It was fun to watch it. Thank you, Isekai Shikaku, for scratching the Isekai itch. Next. Let's see. Should we pick a good one or a bad one? Mm -hmm. We got to mix and match, right? We can't just all just be glazing, glazing, glazing. So we just had a relatively good one. Let's do, let's do a bad one. <laughs> No, actually, there's, there's a, this is, these are really good picks. So, you know what? Let, let's just pick some good ones right now. Um, this, I'm putting, Os I, I'm putting Newbie Osan Adventure on great. Osan Newbie Adventure was a show that I had no expectation. I thought it was just going to be a standard battle shonen where the main character is a 30 year old man because guess what? The average anime watcher is growing up. And those motherfuckers are getting jobs and having families and some of them are just not having families and are just washed up and their dreams are just escaping from them and they, they're they just doing nothing with their lives and this anime relates to them! It's about you're not too late, right? It's never too late to pick yourself up and go for your dreams. And when I watched the episodes, I was like, yo, this is really good. The animation quality was superb. Truly, the fight scenes were a fucking amazing. The pacing of the episodes was also amazing. It's just back to back to back, just fun shit. What is it? Just like an entrance exam arc, right? We see a little flashback with what Rick's powers really is. There was a part where people were kind of pissed off because the show is supposed to be a nobody who was washed up that is now putting the time in. He's grinding and he's achieved greatness. But there is a moment where it's like, oh, he actually has this uh, underlying skill that lets him just like one-shot dragons. And at that point, people are like, I feel cheated. I can no longer relate to this guy who's just one-shotting dragons through an inborn skill. I get it, I get it, right? You feel like you've been lied to. Suddenly you can't insert yourself as Rick because you weren't fucking born as a chosen one. But still, that single thing I don't think takes away from all the hard work that he had to do to actually gain his overall strength. And every arc was so fun. It's just back-to-back -back entries exam. Power, it's just like power fantasy tournament arcs. And the best part about these power fantasies is that it does not get stale, at least in season one. The issue with these kind of power fantasies is as you start to show the same thing where main character just one-shots the enemy, where's the fun, right? For example, failure frame. This dude just paralyzed. Poison, poison, where's the fun? Well, the fun here is the deceptiveness and being evil and just, you know, scamming people. But in this, it's more of... The focus isn't the fight. The focus is the characters, like Angie, right? Angie's whole story arc of redemption throughout the whole tournament arc was fucking amazing. We could beat Geese immediately, yes. But that's not the point. Rick... 
puts the fight in the context of Angie and how hard she worked. And every fight, not just that, even like Broston versus Rick, right? What was that all about? Or Broston versus Kelvin, the champion, right? It was all about Kelvin and how Broston is just there to make sure that all these different characters has their story shine and the fights are simply there as an extra. Kind of like Windbreaker. Remember Windbreaker last season? Yeah, it's a delinquent Oonga Boonga fight anime, but due to the backstories of different characters and making us care for them, the story is actually really good. And that's how exactly I felt about Osa Newbie Adventure. Fantastic anime. I think this is a minimum 7.5 out of 10. Minimum 7.5. Does that mean it should be placed on great? I don't really know how my numeric rating system kind of um, uh, corresponds to this good, great peak. But something about me feels like this should be here for now. And later on, if we do scale it downwards, it'll probably be ahead. But I'm going to place this in great for now. Let's see. What's next? Let us talk about... Ooh, people can get people can get mad about this one. <laughs> Where should Tensor Season 3 go, guys? Part 1 and 2 combined. We'll, we'll, we'll give separate scores. I think we'll give we'll give separate scores, right? First, I will give it a part 2 rating, and then I'll do a combined rating. Alright? Part 2 rating. I think is here. Part 2 rating, I think, is here. Part 2 was definitely better. The meetings suddenly have more frames because 8-Bit Studios dropped Mahoka. They didn't drop it, but they definitely did not give that show fucking love. What they did with Season 3 is a war crime, bro. I will never forget that. Oh my god. That steeplechase? What the fuck? But Part 2 was pretty good. There was definitely meetings. Yes, I know you guys hate meetings, but it was way more fun. We had the whole festival set up, and even the meetings were very engaging as we saw different characters, different world leaders, and them getting invited and, you know, just like, just hanging out, relationships forming, people glazing Rimuru, they understanding what Tempest is all about, right? Having our <laughs> Gavi to Investa do a Nobel, pro Nobel Award prize-worthy performance, right? Shion and, and, and playing the fucking violin, like orchestra, theatrics, right? Science research, and then the tournament. That she was really fun. It was very fun. Not only that, <laughs> Mjolnir was popping the fuck off. You know, being such an entertainer, Mjolnir truly is a character that I had no expectation of in back in season two. But in season three, this, this dude, this is his season, man. And yeah, we banned a racist and it kind of like preps the next stage, right? I think that part two was very fun. Part two, I think is... Another minimum 7.5 out of 10. Simply because the animation... I feel like if the animation adaptation was better than what Bit Studios did, it definitely sh is better than Osan Newbie Adventure. But like, there, uh, it's just... It's kind of... It, 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 I, I place a higher... What's the word? I'm way more... Uh, nitpicking on this, right? I, I am definitely criticizing 8-Bit Studios way more. Simply because the bias I have for Tensura and great isekais like this and how it should receive a better adaptation. A lot of people in this comment section as well have this need. A lot of children um, don't know what I mean when I say this and they think that I'm hating on Tensura and they'll fucking like boot like 8-bit studios and say, this studio is perfectly fine. Sometimes you should step the fuck back and ask yourself, why aren't you vouching for something better? Why is it your first instinct? To start defending this dumbass fucking company that clearly is not giving Tensura all it deserves. Like, why are you like this? Why do you suddenly start fucking getting angry that other people are saying they want a better adaptation? That's something I'll never fucking understand with children. But that's pretty much the story of Tensura. I think that part two was great, but now let's think about part one. I think part one, Hinata versus Rimuru was extremely mid. I'm gonna say it. Straight up. I thought that she won't fight was better. Yeah. Shion fighting the church members was more hype than Hinata versus Rimuru due to how short it was. It felt really out of place. That whole fight was built up so fucking hype. Season 3 is gonna be, oh my god, Hinata versus Rimuru, bro. It's gonna happen again. And then it was like, uh, the Diablo fans, the, the Diablo power fantasy was also fucking hype. But besides that, right, there, it was riddled with so many meetings where there were very good meetings. There was the church meetings that I cared about, the Rotsu meetings I'd care a lot about, but there were some 
stuff that's happening just in Jura Tempest about talking about the fucking random wheels in the ground that people are getting really pissed off about. Anime reaction channels across the board are dropping 10 syrup because the viewership is dying. Oddly enough, because most of those successful anime reaction channels has a main audience of shonen watchers. While for me, I don't have any of that. I just have a bunch of DJ and Isekai watchers. Those meeting episodes did not shy away my fans from watching the content. So give you a little bit of round of applause. You guys are definitely a little bit higher intelligence than most monkeys on YouTube in the anime reaction space. Based on what I've seen, based on the performance of Tensor videos relative to other content and other reaction channels videos, that only means that you guys seem to actually care about the meetings, right? Means that you're probably not just a dumbass child that only wants Oonga Boonga shit happening. So I can, I, I can appreciate that. But at the same time, were those episodes truly just the peak of anime? Ah, uh, I don't know, man. I feel like... Huh? If I'm judging just part two here, but if I'm judging both here, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I feel like Tensura is like probably like a 7.5 out of 10. And I will place it like here or here. I don't I don't know. It's it's like somewhere here. I'm gonna place it. Oh, this feels bad putting Newbie Osan Adventure after Tensor, bro. But here's the thing. Newbie Osan Adventure in 12 episodes, like, it was so fucking good. Every episode's purpose delivered such amazing action and hype and entertainment. And Tensura, every episode did matter. It's necessary setup. But I'm also not gonna sit here and act like those setup episodes are somehow the pinnacle of anime and that I enjoyed it just as much as the hype scenes here. I'm sorry, man. I think I'm gonna have to place it here for now. If I judge just part two, probably like here, but it combined part one and part two, all the good and the bad, probably here for now. It kills me to do this for Tensura because I truly believe still that it's Mushoku Tensei, Tensura, ReZero as the greatest isekais that I've personally seen. Okay, I haven't seen Overlord, Tanya, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of isekais, I know, I know, but of the ones I've seen, I place those in my heart as like the big three right now. And it hurts that I'm putting Tensura here. Blame fucking 8 -Bit Studios, man. Next up. <sighs> Time to glaze? Let's fucking glaze. Yep. You guys are fucking fraudulent. None of you cared for a Roshteri plot. You only care about Yuki going, oh, Ohio Oni-chan, I'm stuck step bro. <laughs> Fan service for the camera. You motherfuckers don't care about Roshteri. Don't lie to me. Don't fucking lie to me and get angry that I'm placing it here. You don't even know what the plot is. None of you care. You cared only for Yuki. Don't fucking tell me that you care about this anime. I... I Rostere, I think, is a fun anime. And it was very hype. The first couple episodes, dude, the numbers on YouTube were fucking stupid. Here. My second most viewed. It's crazy what my second most viewed video is at this current time. <laughs> it's, it's sitting at 50,000. My mind broke for Yuki's plot twist, bro. What the hell, bro? That's crazy! How? What the fuck? Also, I never want to hear a retard say, You need to place the episode title and the fucking title or your videos won't go viral. Shut the fuck up. Placing the anime episode and title number has nothing to do with it performing. You have no understanding of how YouTube works. I'm thinking at like a level four interdimensional level of you don't even know the logic. One day I'll make a video why this is the way it is and why intentionally I do not place episode numbers anymore. But there is a reason. Trust me. I know what I'm fucking doing. Okay. Also, it's followed by fucking Nokutan, which again, just had the biggest fall off. But it's crazy, huh? It's crazy how Roche that he had just huge numbers whenever it was like a... Uh... Yuki popping off. This is the first episode. Is there any other Yuki? Yeah, Yuki's over here as well. Masha is also on the board. That's nice to see. <laughs> Go watch this video if you haven't. 
I, I implore every one of you to go watch this video. The biggest fraud in the anime reaction space. Never forget, never forgive. I will never back down from this grudge. He started it, I'm fucking ending it. Here's Yuki again with Ayano, but you can tell how Roche today has definitely had a significance right on my channel. In terms of YouTube numbers, yeah. Roche today, bro, just popped the fuck off, bro. Roche today was unreal, and it makes sense, right? I think it has to do with definitely Yuki. We cannot deny that fact. If it was just a regular plot, I don't think people care. It's simply the Wincest moments that really attracted a lot of eyes and a lot of content creators talking about it, not only on YouTube, but on Twitter as well. And it was a very entertaining show. It's a Dogakoba product. It's not as polished as Oshinoku, but it's still amazing. I didn't think there was any problems with the animation. I didn't think that there was any problem with the overall directing. I don't know what the source material is, but when I was watching it, every episode felt very concise and fun. Sometimes it's like basically every episode is dumb Wincess bullshit, then fan service. Those episodes do really well. And then sometimes it's just like election debate plot. <laughs> no one watches it. <laughs> the mysteries is pretty fun too. About like, oh, who is that girl in the playground? It's probably Masha at this point. Everything is leading us to believe that. There's a little bit of mysteries for us to kind of keep up with. And it gave me like a Classroom the Elite vibe for whatever reason. There's a lot of parallels and a lot of like connections that maybe it was I'm just reaching my own headcanon, but like Roasted in Classroom the Elite, there's a lot of similarities of like how Alia could be Horikita Susne and you know fucking uh, Masasuka could be Anakoji, right? It, not quite the same, of course not, but there, there's some parallels and I did enjoy this anime a lot. It was fun. Rom com is not my favorite genre. By far, it's it's definitely not one of my favorite genres, but I can definitely enjoy a good anime and this was definitely a great anime that i probably place yeah 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 i think that roche today is also a minimum 7.5 out of 10. i'm not so confident to put this a minimum 8 but i think this should be minimum 7.5 meaning that's the minimum score and you can argue on how high it can be placed but i like this for now yeah I like this for now. Next up, we have... All right. Before we... Okay, we got the top five next, all right? We, we, got, we got a mix of just garbage doo-doo and just peak of all peak. But before we go into that, let's do a little bit of an honorary mention by talking about the animes that I did not complete, so I'm not going to give it a rating that... But I'll give you my opinion, right? I, I, I will give you a rating, but it's not like an actual final rating. It, I, I don't think my opinion for an anime series that I didn't finish, like, it does not matter. Let's talk about Nokutan. Nokutan, as you see, is... Look at that shit, right? Nokutan trailer, Nokutan opening. The viral marketing campaign went crazy. Nokutan truly was hyped up to the next level, but again, it creates this false expectation a bar a standard has been placed that simply could never been delivered upon because of that people realized that this show was actually not peak brain rot like nichijou and they dropped it pretty much starting around episode four that was about the time when because the first two episodes were pretty fun um i think that the first episode definitely did deliver on the promises of the viral marketing but think about this right what do people like they love nokotan popping off and the issue with this anime, in my opinion, is how in the intro episodes, by episode 3, you are now introducing separate side characters rather than prioritizing funny moments with Nokotan. And now the direction of the anime is Koshitan being just, again, the straight man who is just so... I hate the straight man gag. It's just something crazy happens and the straight man has to say, Oh my god, am I the only normal person here? Blah blah blah, that's already mid itself. But then you're starting to introduce other characters while giving Nokotan less screen time in order to like flesh out this roster of characters, right? Who is it? Anko, Bashame, Student Council. By then, people have already tuned out. And then they kind of got back to the more Nokotan greatness. I think it was around episode 6 or something. I think that's the episode where the, you know, antler dynamite went off on the gym. But it's just like by then you've kind of lost the expectation and the hope from the audience that's 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 the tricky thing with anime right it's just that the average audience has such little attention span and 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 they can't really commit to something as much and once you have lost their interest it doesn't matter how good the anime gets later on in the future seasons they've already dropped it right nokotan again it's just an unfortunate victim of viral marketing campaign that it's it's just 
impossible to deliver on. It was a cute anime. I just wish that Koshitan was not such a straight man, but rather another goofy character that just played around with the bizarreness with the whole, you know, characters of the show. But we we got to episode 10. Probably here, right? Pro 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 probably here. I, the, all the jokes were also kind of like beyond me because obviously I'm not Japanese. A lot of cultural barriers, a lot of, you know, old references. I'm just not the target audience. It is what it is. The Strongest Mage, we only checked out two episodes, so I have literally nothing to say about this. It's just another seemingly isekai-esque element show, right? Demon Lords and whatnot, you know, those kind of things in my channel likes. And it was performing all right. Why did I drop it? Um, I don't know. It's because it was performing kind of mid and there was a lot of weeklies happening on that same day. I wanted to prioritize my own community series. And when I say community series, I'm talking about these, right? Because like you'll notice that in my channel, it's a mix of and the next community series, Taru No Index, right? The, the current community series that's airing right now is basically determined by these polls, right? So our content strategy in the channel is we have these community series where we watch what our core audience wants, right? These are the non-tourists. These are actual channel members, fans that's just watching me for me. But obviously, we have to also kind of mix in with trends to kind of pick up new audiences, right? ReZero is going to be trending in Season 3. Hopefully, new people find me through that, blah, blah, blah. Fate Zero is another community series. But in order to make more time for the community series, I think I sacrificed this weekly that was just performing mid. So it is what it is. I have no opinions about this because I only watched like again two episodes. Now, Isekai Suicide Squad. Um, we watched about four episodes or so. Yeah, this shit was just simply hyped up for the DC name. People thought Suicide Squad amazing, right? But it turns out the story is incredibly mid because Nagatsuki Tape, the author of ReZero who created this, I think there was definitely restrictions, right? Not only don't not only do you not want to give your best fucking secret to him, you know, story writing into a separate show that's not your passion project, there's obviously a lot of barriers. If you're, you know, head of DC, you don't want them to just create something volatile. You want something safe, right? So this this is what it is. It's just a safe show. There's nothing crazy about it. It's just Suicide Squad and Isekai Land. That's pretty much it. It was fun just to... The, 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 the elements that I enjoyed was whenever they like quote-unquote save the day, but in, in fact, they just fuck shit up more. <laughs> and they're just walking away into the distance as they're not heroes. It was funny. But, uh... Yeah. Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller hard carried. <laughs> Amanda Waller ending. That is the best thing about this show. And... Where is that? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Amanda Waller. Oh yeah, this thumbnail. <laughs> I had so much fun making this thumbnail, bro. It's Amanda Waller and Skuna doing the same fucking pose. <laughs> 25,000 views. Fucking Calliope's song is so catchy, man. All right. What's next? Um, 2.5D Ridisa. Okay, so I will be um giving you my opinion about, about these two shows together. Blame BBW Elf. Because that's why we dropped 2.5D Ridisa. So what happens is... Every three months, if I'm able to perform at the level the YouTube algorithm has given me, then I get another boost in viewership, about 1.5x to 2x viewership. And we had that for the fifth or sixth time in the channel as we went in. But when I reacted to BBW Elf, what happened was I got a warning for a community guideline strike. And I'm like, what the hell? And it had to do with some sort of like kinks and weird fantasies regarding gluttony and you know like this kind of like feederism shit i'm like what? that was not the intent but the youtube didn't like it they flagged it for a warning i'm like are you serious like gushing over magical girls was perfectly fine but this girl like pinching her fat rolls that was like the the, the line that you you're not okay with okay sure so at that point i was like well if i get another warning then i'm fucked therefore i'm gonna just go Christian channel. That's why you saw so much of those sussy dog emotes. I forced Sir Gregor to basically edit anything that could resemble fan service in fear of my trajectory that was happening in the start of July. That's why 2.5D Didisa also got dropped along with it. If not for this, we probably would be still watching this. It's just, I'm like, all right, we got a new viewership. I'm clearing 1 million plus views per month now. This is a level where I can do this full time. I'm not fucking risking this. I need to just focus. That's why these two were dropped. I'm sorry, man. I played it safe, but 
you know, it's over now. So uh, I think that we can get back to the Kumer content. 100 Girlfriend is coming up in January. I will be there to cover it. Um, <laughs> Lolly leveling. <laughs> Solo leveling, but with lollies in the dungeon. Uh, I hear that the source material is kind of decent, but they cut out a lot of shit and I kind of got bored. It, it, people kind of stopped watching it too. It's simply that. Anytime I drop a series, it's due to basically viewership dying off, which means that you guys don't care about it. And why am I making videos for an audience that doesn't exist, right? It was fun for a bit. There were some really sussy ass feeding scenes. Every time we get a new lolly, they're like, oh, feed me, feed me. And I would, you know, you would feed them. And, and, and the way that they ate, I was like, oh my, oh my God, <laughs> this is, <laughs> you should like censor this shit. <laughs> but it looked like a cute show, but the interest wasn't there. Same thing with this show, right? Same thing with um, raising children in another world or something. It, it was a wholesome show. It, it was truly cute and wholesome, but, you know, it, after the first three or four episodes, that's when the true viewership baseline is shown in. People don't really care about this. All right. Days of my stepsister. Is this peak cinema or are we being gaslit by a bunch of pretentious watchers thinking that this show is actually that good? Hmm. <laughs> Peak filler animation, I agree. <laughs> there are some funny moments where like nothing is happening and they're just fucking eating and that's that's setting the tone, setting the mood. Yeah, we right. I I I find that shit bullshit in freedom too, when you're fucking walking around and it's just fucking blue sky and walking over fucking logs for five minutes and people are like Peak anime of the year, fuck you. Filler animation, but the story was definitely better than I expected. I thought it was going to be some cheap ass, you know, incest bait, Oni Chan. Nah, it wasn't. It was trying to be an actual serious show, and I, I appreciate that. I can respect that, but it's just not what my audience resonates with. You know, obviously, viewership is falling off whenever you don't see the sister say some sussy ass shit. The only reason that the viewership was good in the beginning was because. Motherfuckers were saying some sussy ass shit like, will you buy my body, right? It is what it is. Gigi Harum? I have no hate for this show. I'm simply not the target audience. The whole four coma skit uh, format created this weird experience for me where episode one was fun, but then it just got cringe and cringe and cringe and it's just the same recycled personalities over and over again and I'm like this girl is just being gaslit by this fucking guy this guy is probably gonna make her play all these different personas and she's gonna have a fucking mind break as she confronts him in the future do you even like me no I'm just talking out my ass right now um it's it's a cute show it's 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 a cute show it's just I'm just not the target audience and I just was cringing sorry man sorry man that's how I felt elusive samurai another example where the viewership is strong if you're smart like Joe, I swear to God, if your thumbnail spoils me of ReZero, please do not spoil ReZero thumbnail. Please, 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 please. La, 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 la. Did he upload it? Yeah, he did. Okay, good. Um, basically, uh, the smartest thing that Freshest Anime does is... You'll notice that sometimes his title has Japanese subtitles like this. Oshinoko, right? Oshinoko is a perfect example along a Black Clover where... The global audience, North Americans or English-speaking audience, there is no interest in this show. But there's a huge Japanese audience untapped market and joe is so smart that he's figured out how to tap into the audience by utilizing japanese subtitles and it's the same thing with um it's the same thing with uh the cloverworks <laughs> all right I, I gotta stop the music for a second what the fuck is this bullshit bro bait zero truly is not recognized on youtube at all even on his channel it only got 4.2k views for episode 15, the Excalibur episode. That's fucked up. <laughs> you monkeys straight up don't know greatness when you see it. Like, that's... that's <laughs> Stupid ass fucking Jane Doe Zen Zone Zero Thirst Bait fucking trailer got 8.5k. Fate Zero gets half of that. That's, that's fucking stupid. I hate this shit. I hate this so much. It is what it is though. Anyways, getting back to it. What, um... Basically, the, uh, oops, sorry. Bring this up. Basically, Elusive Samurai, you know, there's a huge, it's obviously Japanese historical anime, right? 
So there's going to be more Japanese people that can resonate with that. I think the English speaking audience, Japanese historical settings quite often suffers. It's, it's quite hard to get a lot of people watching this shit. Again, huge market in Japan, not so much in North America or English speaking audience. Uh, Cloverworks is fucking cooking with the animation. I'd say like, this is definitely one of the best animes, right? In terms of just production value, just animation. Like, this... Makayan... Oshinoko... Wistoria. I think those are like... The best animated animes. If we're talking just straight up visuals... It is... Beautiful. It is fucking stunning. I don't think Oshinoko is quite there. I think that, um... Sorry. I don't think Roshitere got the same level of polish compared to Oshinoko. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just historical anime that my audience doesn't really resonate with. It was beautiful anime. There's a lot of Shota bait, but... A Shota in a Japanese setting doesn't work, but a Shota in a, you know, 7th Prince, a BBL Shota, that works. <laughs> it is what it is, guys. And finally, the anime that nobody remembers. Another anime that lived up to its name after I dropped it. So this is what happens, huh? This is what happens when I drop an anime. Once I drop an anime, People will complain and beg in the comment sections, Bro, did you drop this? Please continue this, bro, please! The newest episode just so peak! No one. Nobody begged for Nobody Remembers Me. I'm not even lying, I'm not even exaggerating. Not a single fucking person talked about this show in my channel saying, Please bring it back. That's how mid it was, hey. It's just something about this show is so off. I think this is the perfect example where the animation wasn't bad, right? The animation wasn't bad. The soundtrack wasn't bad. The voice acting wasn't bad, right? Overall production value was great, yet I felt empty watching this show. When I watched the first episode of ReZero, I'm immediately immersed. Maybe it's due to the setting, the environment, and I'm more of like a fantasy medieval land enjoyer and you know nobody remembers not like that it tried to be smart too right there was a lot of intriguing plot lines of who, where what happened to you know fucking the true hero or something and how do we you know go in a separate timeline where the different races are suddenly uh, it's like rewritten history right? right for sure there's mysteries but like i could not give a fuck something about it i just could not get myself immersed into every episode seemed hype but in the back of my mind i'm like this feels empty to me that's how i felt and i don't know how to explain this other than it's the overall plot and the setting that just did not resonate with me as a consumer and maybe you felt the same way but i'm sorry man there's you you can't just use this girl tie her up into a fucking pole and you know expect us to care about this show it is what it is i just thought it was mid overall maybe the source material is better Maybe it's the overall direction, right? Even if the production value is good, what about the direction of the adaptation of the content, right? Just because things are pretty and things are moving doesn't really mean that it was well adapted, right? So, I don't know, man. It's just, yeah. And that's pretty much it. My opinion is on the honorary mentions. Again, what does it mean when I drop an anime? It means that the anime isn't bad. It means that of the audience watching me on YouTube, they just don't care about it. And if I'm making content for an audience that doesn't exist, I'm wasting my time. And for every one of those videos I'm making of these topics, there's other people waiting on other topics. And it is in my best interest to move on. There's nothing personal. It is, again, not a selfish behavior. This is simply me following what my audience wants. The views and the money that I'm chasing is simply a byproduct of understanding who my audience is, what they want, and delivering to that. And if the YouTube algorithm sees that my, you know, it's resonating, the content is something they want to see, that's all there is, bro. It's just business. All right. Let's pick an anime. That is going to go to the peak of the list. And it is Makin Hero. Makin Heroine is the first peak that I'm going to put on this list. This anime is fucking amazing. And again, I am not necessarily a rom-com enjoyer. Well, I definitely enjoy it, but it is not something that I always seek out, right? I'm kind of averse to rom-com. I like it when there's more calm than rom. I hate it when it's fucking melodramatic and all depressing and shit. Rom-drama, I hate that shit. Rom-com, where it's more calm, like Kaguya-sama, I have fun with that, right? Dangers in My Heart was also an amazing rom-com that we watched recently, but 
Makian? Absolutely. I have been glazing A1 pictures this season like crazy. A1 Pictures truly is a peak studio. They know what they're doing. They have talent. It felt like every episode was a passion project, a labor of love, right? While this anime was just simply Katakawa trying to fill in their fucking pockets by just milking a shitty adaptation of a show. This was love poured into it. And it is so nice when you see something, even if you don't enjoy that genre, when you watch something or you, you experience something that has been created with love, you can tell it's it feels good. It feels like I'm not wasting my time because they didn't waste their time. And I, I truly appreciate that. I, I, the plots, what, what is it really all about? You know, it's, it's just Nuku, just a beta cuck loser that also is just surrounded by a bunch of other loser girls that all got cucked. But it's really fun to just kind of see what goes on in their day to day lives. It, it, it has a lot of slice of life elements to it. And, you know, it, this this blue-haired girl, Anna, is a fucking demon. And Lemon got done dirty, but I think that she deserves it because she, she didn't fucking step up for herself. And Komari is just a fucking peak of all greatness. And it was just so fun. It was great. I think that this is definitely a peak. And this is minimum 8.5 out of 10. Yeah. So does that mean suddenly 8.5 is the threshold for peak? I still don't know how my numeric system, you know, aligns with this just words but this is peak for me this is fucking peak for me next up let's talk about perry perry is probably here or here i think it's a notch behind isekai shikaku but a notch ahead of failure frame perry made me more mad than happy because of the whole premise of Noor having one brain cell and the whole plot is him misunderstanding and just doing crazy miracles and thinking it's not a big deal, right? I get that. Up until I parry a dragon, I was angry at this show and I considered dropping it. But ever since I parry a dragon, every episode beyond that was super, super fun. Parried an army, parried a fucking empire, all the different sovereigns, the teachers, instructors, they're like, oh my god, this kid's a legend. We even have a whole revision of the intro of this anime from the perspective of the teachers and how they're like, oh my god, this kid is crazy. When we thought that he was just useless. I think that this should be here. I think that Perry is probably minimum 6 or 6.5. It's it's a six point something, I I and and I, I think that's all right. I, I think a six point something is all right. I think it's definitely in the upper bounds of what a mid should be in my expectations. So it's either here or here. I can't really tell. But am I not now cherry picking just the good parts and thinking that it should be in good? Maybe it should be here, because I'm just thinking about all the good parts. It should be the entire season as a whole. So I think I'm gonna put it there. With it being like a minimum 6 or 6.5 something. Perry also had one of the best soundtracks to me. There's this one soundtrack that plays when Noor goes in to do some hype shit. It always gave me goosebumps. That's pretty much it. Just an enjoyable anime. Probably kind of forgettable, but nothing terrible. Remember, mid doesn't mean bad. Dookie means bad. And most animes are never going to be placed here because they're probably going to get dropped or not even picked up, right? Now, we're left with <laughs> one, one of these three do not belong. Can you guys tell? <laughs> of these animes, one of these three does not belong. Can you guys tell what that is? <laughs> um, let, let's, let's talk about Wistoria first, right? Let, let's, let's talk about Wistoria first. I think that Wistoria, even though it's a very simple anime, even though it's a very basic ass Unga Boonga battle shown in, I think it deserves to be in peak. Yup. I think that the production value again is just superb. One of the best animated stories of the season. The fights were so fucking hype. They were the actions were dynamic, right? The animation was animating. I can't really say that much about fucking Tower of God, right? I can't say about this show. And 
the story again. I don't, I, I think um, a lot of people puts emphasis on how unique a plot needs to be, right? This is something I noticed with Giguk. Giguk has a very interesting rating system where if it's something that's been done before, he has low emphasis on it. But if it's like a unique thing, then suddenly it just gets a higher value. To me, it doesn't matter if you're trying something new or not. These tropes and cliches exist for a reason because they're standard greatness. And it's all about the execution of said tropes and, you know, uh, cliches. Just because it's done before doesn't mean that it, it's bad. In fact, I think they executed this amazing. Bandai Namco just created this all-star fucking lineup for season one. It was another passion project of love. They even said, like, I'm not sure if we're going to get an all-star team like this again. I think that season two, we're going to get the same production staff. The fights were hype. There was a lot of funny slice of life moments as well, right? The slice of life moments with like fucking Xion. There's so many gay baiting jokes, bro, with Roasty as well, but it's looking like Roasty could be just Elfie again. And Liana, you know, funniest things at the finale. That was fun to me. The whole concept of a person who is looked down upon due to not being able to use magic, but being able to bail those, you know, same people without using magic is just stupid hype to me. And the finale episode. Right? Not the finale, but the penultimate one as well. It's just like, it's not just sword or wand. It's sword and wand. Now it's just like, what the hell? Will is actually a sword. He gets imbued by an element and he can destroy this grand duke of evil that's from like the 25th floor below. That's crazy. And then the world expands as we realize that there's not just wands, but there are these swords. Where do they live? Are they in the dungeon? Who is Finn? Right? What the hell is going on with the light sovereign? Why does he look like a dwarf? Who is headless? What about the celestial host, right? It keeps it definitely interesting and mysterious enough. The world is expanding. It's hype more than ever. I love it. I think it can safely be here. And this is another like minimum 8.58 out of 10. I don't know. Is this like 8.5? Probably? I'm not sure. Somebody has a fun theory that the light sovereign it's just three dwarves all stacked up. <laughs> it's it's one trench coat hiding three dwarves, bro. That's what's happening there. <laughs> but yeah, I I think that this is like a minimum eight or an eight point five. I'm not sure. It's 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 definitely an eight point something. Now, let's talk about anime of the year. Right now, I present to you the duality of anime. One anime. Probably the best anime of this season. And the other anime... Probably the worst of this season. <laughs> Let's talk about Tower God. Oh my fucking god. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> what happened? What the hell happened? What? This is an amazing show. Dude. Th this shit was season one went crazy. It's like the one piece of webtoons. And then they killed it! They fucking killed it! Listen, the opening was hype. I still think that Tower of God Season 2 opening, one. Oh my god, that shit is dummy hype. And the first couple episodes, they baited us with seemingly slightly above average, if not above average, just, just average animation. But then we were quickly... <laughs> we were faced with this truth that... There is no fight. It's just moving frames, bro. The adaptation is so fucking bad. I think that Dookie is a bit mean, right? Obviously, there are shows that I place, remember, just like how I just like how I'm critical of Tensura because I believe in those series more, right? Like, I don't believe in failure frame. I don't believe in parry. These are fucking random seasonals, right? But I believe in Power of God. That's why I just I'm more critical of these shows. And it's probably, probably, probably mid, right? I don't think it's necessarily dookie. Because, like, the art, the frames, when it's just paused, it looks good. But the problem is the fight. When there's no fight and it's just yapping with Blue Turtle and Rachel, for sure. It's reminding me of the old Tower of God. But it's just, for a series that has a lot of fights, too, that's supposed to be super hype. Bro, the Urek Masino versus Viol fight? That shit mobile game did a better fucking job. What does that mean? Right? What the hell does that mean? Failure frame better in Tower of God? And this is the interesting thing where I feel like Tower of God is probably better than these, but I 
feel betrayed. I am spiteful, so I want to give it a shitty score. Do you know what I'm talking about? Again, when I'm biased, I will explain to you my thought process. Like, like these, I think I'm giving objective rating, but like Tensura, this is a biased opinion too, right? Because like I have faith. I, I love the IP. I love the series. Yet it was done dirty. That's why I'm mad. Same with Tower of God. I love this series. I spent so much fucking time in season one cooking, bro. So much cut content. We were so deep in the trenches, and now. I don't even care because the studio doesn't care. You know, how am I supposed to just get immersed into the show and love the show and talk about it when the anime studio doesn't give a fuck about this show? It's just, ah, oh, fuck me, dude. It's just, I'm putting this in Dookie. Yep, I, kn I know. And people are going to get mad in this fucking video. They're gonna say, wow, you really rate Failure Frame of a Tower of God. Fuck you, retard. You didn't even fucking watch the video and listen to my logic that got to this point. I understand that this is an unfair rating. I understand that this is a very biased rating. I understand that Tower of God probably should be rated like higher than these two. But I'm just mad. So I'm just gonna put it in here. I'm mad. This shit's a fucking five point something. Fuck this show. Probably should be like a six point something. But I'm so mad, I'm gonna give this a five point something, bro. Fuck this show. I hope that. Part two will be done better. Workshop battle, I'm not sure if we're being catfished. We're seeing little glimmers of hope as we see the animation actually start to move in the openings. But every opening is always just catfish and gaslight, you know? So it's like, ugh, I'm hoping for the best, but I'm preparing for the worst with Tower of God workshop battle arc. I'll be there to cover it. And finally, I think this show is the best show of the season. Oshinoko? Season 2, I believe, is the best anime of summer 2024. And am I capping? Am I glazing? I am glazing. But is there a good reason to glaze? I believe so. Doga Kobo, their products are unreal. And I still think that Doga Kobo placed more emphasis on Oshinoko rather than Roshitere. The polish was just on another level. Every episode just cooking. It's so fucking beautiful, and not only is it beautiful, the plot is compelling. The fact that they were able to do the whole theater 2.5D play ball, making it battle shonen to enjoy for monkeys like me. So fun. Aqua's Dark Star, the black hole is showing up. Kana, Akane, bro. This show, which is literally just a bunch of fucking nerdy theater kids doing stupid as dramas, had better fight animation than Tower of God. I want you to realize this. Just think about that for a second. Oshinoko, the theater show, had better battle shown in animation than this. What the fuck? It is embarrassing. Well, it's not, because Duga Kobo is an amazing studio, and I'm doing an unfair comparison, simply hiding behind this genre of, you know, non battle shonen, but at the same time delivering such peak animation. Nah, just because this genre is not battle shown doesn't mean that it can't do fights, and we've seen it. They are fucking peak! And then after that part, it gets even better as we realize the secret truth of what Himeko might be. Half-brother? Brother from another mother? DNA matches? But hold up! His real parents! They're dead. But it's not. Because the real dad shows up at the graveyard when Ruby visited bro. That episode went fucking crazy. And we still have the finale coming up this Sunday. So we'll be definitely tuning in for that. But even without the season finale, I can confidently say Oshinoko is probably the best anime of summer 2024. A thing that I can definitely give like a minimum 8.5. Maybe it should be a 9. I don't know, but it's it's definitely in the top of this fucking list, man. And that's pretty much it for summer 2024. Again, Tower of God is simply here because I'm angry. This is an unfair rating. I'm being more harsh to it because I love Tower of God. Same with Tensura. I'm giving it much... Like, it hurts me that Osanyu Adventure and Roshitere is ahead of Tensura because Tensura is a series that I just recognize as one of the three great isekais of the ones that I've personally seen. Again, Tensura and Tower of God are biased, harsh criticism for me due to the love I have for those shows. And everything else I think is pretty much on track. And that's pretty much it. We're entering a brand new season of anime. Oh man. Tonight we're gonna be watching ReZero. Shit's gonna be a three hour reaction and there's so many more seasonal animes that we'll be checking out and we'll see what's gonna happen. And at the end of the day, remember, 
How do we decide what to drop and what to keep? It's all about you. You vote with your clicks. You vote with your action. Simply through viewer, you know, uh, viewership, that's all I care about. Because if I'm making content that my audience resonates with, the views will be there. But if the videos are falling off, that means that you guys have moved on and I will too. I will see you next time in the beginning of... Well, we got to let like one week cycle for like a brand new fall 2024 tier list. But I'll be there next time. Bye bye.